Hey, it's Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. Today, I've got a couple of fails planes out and some of their bases, and we're gonna see if we can't cut a simple molding profile. Should be fun. So I've already got the 5 8 hollow bases and iron set up on one of the planes, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up the round, the 5 8 round on the second plane. And I found so far that the way I prefer to do this is I'll kind of loosely put them on there. So they're on there, but they can move around a little. So like right there, you can see everything can kind of move around. And what I prefer about this is I'll get them on there and then I'll hold the plane up on the edge of the bench and just kind of push down while I tighten these. And the reason that I like doing that is that then when I get here, this whole back piece is referencing off of my bench. And then I can just go ahead and hold the whole thing down and tighten it up. And now I know that the front and back are at least parallel enough <laughs> compared to my workbench. So then after that, the next thing I do is I keep holding it upright on the bench. And I basically just put the iron in until it touches the bench, push it against the side of the plane so it's in there it's kind of just touching the bench and i tighten it down a little bit and the other thing to be careful of is to make sure that you have the bases spaced far enough apart that the iron can actually go through because there's a little bit of play on them there we go now you can kind of see it's just a little bit coming out of there so the, the irons or i mean the bases some of them can move a little bit, uh, some more than other ones. This one's got a huge variance, I don't know why, but it's important to know <laughs> this angle here will eventually kind of drive it into the front. So you need to make sure that it's spaced out far enough that this iron won't hit the front base. So now we've got that one all set up and we should be able to start cutting some wood. And right about here is where my microphone quit working. So I'm describing all kinds of awesome. <laughs> Essentially, because this was a video about the fails planes, I pre-cut this kind of test piece with a couple of rabbits. And then I also beveled the front. And I'm just kind of going to use that as a way to guide the hollows and rounds uh, there's plenty of people out there that'll talk to you about that so I'm not going to go into all that but i'm going to use the hollow plane and it basically just rides in between the two faces of that top rabbit so in here you can kind of see i'm just going through and uh, well just starting a plane it's taking a little bit of a light cut for what i'd prefer I do like doing this, but it was rather late, so I wanted to get the video done. So I just used that little brass hammer to tap the iron down a little bit to get just a little bit deeper cut. And now you can kind of see that I can just kind of go at it in between the two faces of the rabbit. And it's also important since you don't have any depth stops or fences or anything, to kind of make sure that you even out the profile yourself. So I guess the thing to notice is you'll see me rocking the plane because this base is only 60 degrees of a circle. And if I'm doing more than that, I have to rock the plane back and forth so that I can actually get, you know, more than that 60 degrees if I want 90 degrees or whatever. So you just kind of have to move it around a bit to make sure you get what you want. And because I'm pretty close to where I'm at on this end, I need to take a little bit more on the front. And again, with no depth stops, you, you just have to make those adjustments yourself since there's nothing mechanical to do it for you. And now that the mic is working again, you can have the soft, soothing sounds of shavings. Now I'm going to switch over to the hollow plane and start taking care of this hollow. That's a pretty aggressive cut. <laughs> so the same 
Same thing is going to apply here. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna kind of rock down to try and help round that over a little bit more. In fact, I think I'm gonna back that off a little bit because that's quite a bit. Sometimes with these and with the Stanley 45s that don't have depth adjusters and stuff, this little wedge here is held in place with that screw. Sometimes when you tighten this down, it gets stuck when you loosen it back off. So that's, if you see me tapping on the screw with the little brass hammer, that's just to release this so that the iron can actually get let go, so. The other thing to make sure of too is that this corner of the iron doesn't actually stick out too far um, beyond your base because otherwise you'll get big gouges but you also need it to be just a tiny bit beyond the outside edge otherwise you won't be able to get into corners like this. There's also no harm in cleaning things up with a shoulder plane once you get that far because uh, I just like the planes. I make no real claims at being that good at <laughs> cutting molding by hand. I just kind of wanted to use them because I got done sharpening them up a bunch and uh, thought I'd share. So, yeah, it's an all right profile. <laughs> and how do you make an all right profile better? Just a quick sand to kind of even everything out a little bit. And that kind of just helps round out any of the facets on the profile that I may have left. I know, I know, I'm not the world's greatest uh, when it comes to laying out profiles to use hollow and rounds to cut molding with, but I tried. <laughs> There's much more qualified people out there to take advice on how to lay out your molding profiles. I did not really listen to any of them in this. In fact, I've read and watched some uh, stuff that I've bought about laying out profiles, but that was a couple of years ago, so we'll just, uh, I mean, it's molding. You know, kinda. Doesn't have to be pretty molding, but it's molding, you know, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's using the Fails Patent Plane, um, Otis A. Smith Fails Patent Plane, with the hollow and round bases to cut just a simple, <clears throat> ugly, uh, <laughs> molding profile. And uh, it's a pretty neat little plane. And I've recently gone through and cleaned up uh, all of the hollow and round bases that I have and sharpened up all of the irons that I've got for those hollows and rounds. So I don't know, maybe I'll keep practicing some of these molding profiles and actually go back and reread some of the stuff about laying it out right so it looks better. And uh, maybe I'll come back to it again, but I also have various other profiles. This plane came with a lot, um, when it was original that is. Uh, it came with a lot of different profiles, hollows, rounds, side beads, center beads, um, rabbits, plow, cutters, various fancy profiles. I mean, you could do OGs and I think there was a couple of chamfer cutters and various other things, but I don't know. I really like it. It's a fun plane. I think I might have to start doing a little bit more content on it just to get myself to actually use it because honestly, I've had a lot of these for the better part of the year, a year and a half maybe, some probably even two, and I haven't really taken it out a whole lot, so it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Anyway, as always, I appreciate those of you that stuck around this far. And if you're not already subscribed, I would certainly appreciate it if you did that as well. And until next time, I will catch you on that next one. You know, I mean, I should have I should have probably paid a little bit better attention to laying out my rabbit. Because this one obviously was not big enough for the 5 eighths, So it's, uh, yeah, it's way too far that way. And... This one actually came out okay. I should have put the rabbit in here I forgot about, so I had to do that after the fact. But, I mean, all in all, 
not bad for somebody who's <laughs> not very good. Uh, whatever.